Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. In today's episode, all of those people who are in the pizza loving land of Italy, we have now got Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi arrives in Italy, Campa goes wireless. Yes, they have gone wireless. Well, I think they've gone wireless, could have got this wrong. By Hambini, age five. Remember to check me out on Crapstagram and Patreon forward slash Hambini. First of all, the usual disclaimer, I've lifted the pictures from various places. If you want the credit, then email me. Right, let me show you the FCC website. Now, this isn't actually the FCC website, but it's got all the documents in one place. The other place that you can go and get this is on hambini.com, where if you just click on that, you'll get the, basically I've got the meat and the bones out of it for you. But um, if you look on here, this is Campag's declaration to the FCC. So if you sell anything that is basically wireless in the States, you need to go and lodge an application with the FCC, as it Federal Communications and Cheesy in Competition or whatever it's called. Uh, so that, and that's what they've done. So all of these documents relate to the stuff that's gone through. Now, an interesting one in here is, there's a few things that are actually blocked, so you can't see it. Um, they've asked for a declaration to be um, short-term confidentiality requested for the user's manual. Um, so you can see the X there. This has come from Decra. Now, I think it's the same as Decra in Germany where they're well known as a certification body, a bit like SGS Thompson and uh, a few others. I used to use them because I used to take my car in for a tough test. Um, but they are you know, a regulatory body. They're also in the UK. There's a few others. That is, is what they've done. This is you know, a full breakdown of all the stuff that they've sent in. There's all sorts in there, I guess, for you know, regulatory purposes. The big thing is probably for me, not the fact that they've gone wireless. It's the new levers. Now the levers have done away with the thumb lever. Now this looks to be the lever on the right. Um, and that's the, the outside of the right, that one there. That's the inside of the right. There are a couple of things. I mean, first of all, you can see, you know, I'll draw on this one, this and this. So they're your two actuation buttons. Um, they're actually quite small. Uh, they don't look to be particularly big. So if you took that, which is a GRX lever, a Shimano GRX lever, um, it's probably about half the size of that. The other interesting thing that I noted was the hinge position. So on the, the upper lever, that looks to be where, you know, that's the right lever. It looks to move that way. Yeah, the one on the bottom, which is this one, is hinged on the bottom. So that one, if, uh, if we assume that's the button, will move like that. So the hinge is there and it moves like that. Whereas the top one, moves that way. I'm not sure how that's going to work in practice, um, whether that's going to be comfortable or not. We'll see. Uh, I think that's a spring in there, maybe a spring in there. I mean, these pictures are crap, so <laughs> I might be wrong. Uh, and the rest of it looks fairly standard, like a Campag um, lever. These are the shots from the inside. Uh, there's not really that much telling in there. There's the CE certification, so if you're selling in Europe, you need that. Um, there's also a UK CA, which is well, it's when the UK left Brexit, uh, that, well, when the UK left the EU, they had to bring up their own legislation, which is basically a mirror of the CE. Um, I think that one's a US one. I can't remember what it's called. I don't really care. Waste Equipment Directive, and it's Bluetooth. Now, the other telling thing is down here, CR2032, so it is a coin cell three volt battery uh, and then it goes in there. Now the mechanics of this, I think the brake, oh God, the brake slave cylinder is probably in there. The actual handle comes down here and then the routing of the cable goes down that way. Now I'm making the assumption here that it's hydraulic. It might not be, it might be a rim brake, don't know. Um, interested to know if you know any more because Campag, you know, they're a bit out of the way in terms of mainstream, so they're more likely to, I think, support rim brake than maybe SRAM and Shimano. 
Uh, there's nothing else really in here. Um, I mean, that, that's the, the top through it, and that looks like a, a line for the brakes, one way or the other. These are, I mean, this is, again, it's the electronics of this. Uh, there's a load of passive components on here, so capacitors, diodes, all sorts. I think that's a two-layer PCB. I'm not totally sure. I'm not even an electronic expert, so you know, don't take my um, guidance as gospel on that. That that looks like the main integrated circuit. I've no idea what it says on there. I can't read it. So if someone knows what it is, I'm guessing it's got to be something to do with the wireless transmission. The reason for that is at this point. On the other side so this is the reverse here you've got the battery power takeoff there and there i assume uh, you've got an antenna socket there i'm wondering if that's mmcx if someone knows then let me know i don't know if it's a shared antenna i don't really know because the left lever. i couldn't see any pictures of the left lever so um yeah i'm assuming the two are just completely independent but again i'm not totally sure uh not else much else to say on there Right, some other thoughts. How much is this going to cost? $4,000? There's some comments on my Instacrap that that's what they thought it was going to be. Um, another one is there's a load of patents that are floating around there, and I don't know which ones they've gone after or not gone after. Um, I guess some people who have got way more time than me will probably go and look it up. Is it going to be fully wireless a la ETAP, or is it semi-wireless? So the back mech and the front mech are linked together so a bit like shimano di2 or the fsa we don't know some speculation as to whether it's 13 speed or not and i have seen some wireless stuff to come out of china and it does look the shizzle so this could be just preempting that um, and if it's coming out of china it's probably going to be significantly cheaper and I don't think it's going to take that long for that technology to sort of get to a level where you wouldn't really think twice about getting it. Um, in wheels, I would argue that you know Chinese wheels are just as good as zip wheels, if not better. Um, but yeah, it's almost become a commodity item. Going forward, I think electronic will almost certainly become the default because it is much cheaper to make uh, all those you know minute mechanical components they are a ball ache to make they're very very small the you know the manual things to make it you know the labor to make it versus an electronic pcb is, is just completely it's a different league um, and they've made those electronics you know fairly lightweight fairly small and can do that and i think that's where we're going um Shimano, you've almost got you know a line drawn 105 Ultegra and Dura Ace. That is it. They're all electronic. Um, and then SRAM, you know, the top two lines in SRAM are electronic. And I think I think that's where we're going. I think that'll be become the default. And again, the question about rim brakes or uh, hydraulic disc for uh, for Campag. Interesting to know what your thoughts are. If you do have any comments, then whack them down below. If you don't, then tough. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser. And let's just check that the pen was working because I forgot I was so excited.